Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis. This is the 13th video in our series about acid-based disturbance, fluids, and electrolytes. In the previous video, we talked about how the kidney handles the extracellular fluid volume. As you know, volume is supreme in your body. Today, we'll talk about how the kidney handles the tonicity of the ECF. So let's get started. In the previous videos, we talked about all of these subjects, so make sure to subscribe and save this playlist. And here is my 12th question for you, quiz time, so pause and let me know the answer in the comments. Let's answer the question of the previous video. Which of the following scenarios do you expect to find in a male who has just been through cranial surgery to resect a glioma? Okay, after you resect the glioma, what will happen to the plasma ADH? Okay, let's suppose and assume that there's a problem with the hypothalamus, which will lead to decreased secretion of ADH. This is called central diabetes insipidus. In central diabetes insipidus, the plasma ADH level is going to decrease. When you decrease the ADH, you are wasting water in the kidneys. So your plasma is super concentrated and the plasma osmolality is going to go up. Which of these choices is accurate? So we have less plasma ADH and increased plasma osmolality. The answer is C. So to regulate the extracellular fluid volume, we depend on those five mechanisms. So let's talk about them. In the previous video, we talked about how to regulate the ECF volume, and we discussed the baroreceptor response, less effective arterial blood volume, sympathetic response, increased effective arterial blood volume, parasympathetic response, vagus baby. ADH acts on the collecting tubules, V2 receptors, aquaporin 2 channels, acting on free water, free 2 twos. There are two types of water, as you know, obligated and free. We discussed reabsorption at the proximal convoluted tubule and the filtration fraction in the previous video. When you have low effective arterial blood volume, this favors reabsorption. High effective arterial blood volume, this favors secretion. Many of your professors don't understand the profundity of those two statements. Reabsorption of sodium and water, water here is obligated at the proximal depends on the filtration fraction and the startling forces. But reabsorption of free water at the collecting tubule, which means water without electrolytes, depends on plasma osmolality or tonicity. The kidney responds to change in plasma osmolality. You have change in ACF tonicity, the kidney responds, the tonicity returns back to normal, thank you kidney. If you have increased tonicity, Osmoreceptors in your hypothalamus will sense the change, releasing ADH, kidney retains water, tonicity returns back to normal, thank you kidney. The urine is very concentrated thanks to ADH, so the urine osmolality is higher than the plasma osmolality. As you know, the normal plasma osmolality is about 290, the urine osmolality, let's say 500, 400 or some, something like that. On the other hand, if you have low tonicity, you have decreased ADH release, Kidney excretes water, the tonicity returns back to normal, and the urine is very diluted relative to plasma, so let's say the urine is 100. For us to say thank you kidney, many conditions must be met. Normal thirst sensation, normal GFR, adequate delivery of filter to the loop of Henle, intact tubular concentrating mechanisms, intact diluting mechanisms, normal ADH release, kidney responsiveness to ADH. Let's talk about each one of them. Normal GFR. If GFR decreased to 20% of its normal value, which is stage 4 renal failure by definition, the kidney cannot concentrate or dilute urine. Third, adequate delivery of the filtrate to the loop of Henle and the distal convoluted tubule. In case you have lots of water reabsorbed in the proximal tubule early on, this leaves less water to reach the loop and the distal convoluted tubule, so less water is being excreted, water is being retained, leading to hyponatremia. If you remember the silver equation, you have increased water retention and decreased serum sodium. Intact tubular concentrating mechanisms, the loop of Henle, 
concentrates your urine, it creates the hypertonic medullary interstitium and the medullary concentration gradient. And it has the sodium potassium two chloride channel, which generates free water because it extracts all of the electrolytes away from the filtrate, leaving the tubule with only water. This is called free water. Free water is going to go to the collecting tubule acted upon by ADH through the V2 receptor. This will lead to concentration of the urine. But when you use loop diuretics, you are counteracting the ability of loop of Hanley to concentrate urine. So when you use loop diuretic, you cannot concentrate your urine and your urine is dilute. Next, intact tubular diluting mechanism. How does the kidney dilute your urine? So here's loop of Henle, and then you have the distal convoluted tubule. Loop of Henle reabsorbs sodium through the sodium potassium 2 chloride, and the DCT reabsorbs sodium through the sodium chloride co transport. Now we are removing the sodium, but this is impermeable to water. Water remains inside the tubule, diluting the urine. But when you use thiazide diuretics, you are getting rid of this co-transporter and now we cannot dilute the urine. Question, why loop diuretics do not reduce the ability of the kidney to dilute urine as much as thiazides do? Because loop diuretics block here, still we have the distal convoluted tubule functioning, it can still dilute the urine. But when you use thiazides, you are getting rid of the last resort, the last ability to dilute the urine. Normal control over ADH release, as you know, osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus will sense change in tonicity. The supraoptic neurons in the hypothalamus will release the ADH in the posterior pituitary, which did not secrete the ADH, but it capitalizes on it. It uses the hypothalamus. ADH present, urine is concentrated. ADH absent, urine is diluted. On your exam, any patient with a recent history of brain tumor, head trauma, or a recent brain surgery, can have central diabetes insipidus, which means decreased secretion of ADH. Normally, your kidney should respond to ADH by the V2 receptors, but when you have pathology, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, the water is lost in urine, ADH is no longer effective, and you will lead to hypernatremia, if you remember the silver equation. In the next video, we'll talk about normal kidney physiology. Yay, but let's have a quiz time. Which of the following scenarios do you expect to find in a patient whose stupid doctor infused him with 3% saline? That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Facebook. You can ask me private questions there and go to Patreon to get all of my notes and to support this channel. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist. Be safe, stay happy, and study hard.